As a result, Canada's middle class is now far poorer than the United States. We have the slowest growing economy in the OECD. Our economy has shrunk more than any other G7 country, most of which have actually grown. The carbon tax is killing $25 billion a year of wages and other benefits for families. Thank you very much to the great workers of Stelco. The great workers of our oldest steel plant. Here they are, the greatest workers in the world in this 115-year-old plant. Four generations, over a century, workers from around the world came to call Canada home. And when they arrived in Hamilton, they were given a chance to work making steel. Now, all these years later, these workers continue to galvanize and cool roll that steel. They bring it to the market in countless different products that Canadians take for granted. They built this city. They built the hammer with their hard work. They are the backbone of our nation. We used to have a promise in Canada. Here was the deal. Hard work got you a powerful paycheck that bought an affordable, food, affordable home and food in safe neighborhoods. That deal, like everything else, after nine years of Justin Trudeau is broken. Inflation is at a 40-year high. Housing costs have doubled nationwide and tripled in Hamilton. It's now impossible for your standard manufacturing job to pay enough to buy a home in most major markets. Housing costs have risen faster in the last nine years in Canada than in any other G7 country, and they're almost twice as high as in the neighboring United States towns. Crime, chaos, drugs and disorder are rampant in our streets. And you would think that the NDP would be outraged by this. They used to stand up for the working men and women. But nope, they've signed on. Jagmeet Singh is delaying the election until next year when he qualifies for a pension. $2.2 million, paid for by these hardworking people. Sell out Singh has betrayed these workers. He's, he gets his pension, Trudeau gets power, these workers get the bill. Now, Trudeau's policies have gotten even worse. He's bringing in a 61 cent a litre carbon tax. That will add up to $300 million in costs for this plant alone, bleeding more of our jobs and paychecks to other countries around the world. As a result, Canada's middle class is now far poorer than the United States. We have the slowest growing economy in the OECD. Our economy has shrunk more than any other G7 country, most of which have actually grown. The carbon tax is killing $25 billion a year of wages and other benefits for families. And he's blocking resource projects so oil, gas, and mining production go to dirty dictatorships rather than coming here to Canada. Meanwhile, the Communist Party in Beijing, which Justin Trudeau says he admires so much, is exploiting weak labor and environmental standards to produce artificially cheap steel, aluminum, and EVs that create more pollution. They have stolen technology from Western countries, limited access to global supply chains, and have massively subsidized steel, aluminum, and EV industries. They're doing this with the goal of crushing our steel, our aluminum, and our automotive production and taking our jobs away. Trudeau has failed to protect our workers against this economic predation. In fact, he's refused to match U.S. tariffs on Chinese-made electric vehicles. The U.S. first introduced tariffs to counteract Chinese-made vehicles years ago, and other tariffs have now been in place for six years. Meanwhile, Trudeau has done nothing to protect our workers and our jobs. Worse than that, this is where it gets really crazy. He's giving out rebates for people to buy Chinese-made cars. 
So let's get this straight. Justin Trudeau and Sellout Singh want to give taxpayer-funded subsidies for buying Chinese-made cars while they impose tax penalties on the manufacturing of Canadian-made cars. No wonder hundreds of billions of dollars have left our country and are creating jobs in other countries. Canada's workers are the best in the world. They deserve powerful paychecks and a prime minister who will protect them. Rather than allowing authoritarian overseas governments to steal our jobs with their low labor standards and poor environmental policies, we're going to bring home those paychecks to Canada. Bring home our jobs. Thank you. And that is why common sense conservatives are calling for the introduction of a 100% tariff on made in China EVs entering Canada, two, a 50% tariff on semiconductors and solar cells, three, a 25% tariff on steel and aluminum, graphite, and other critical minerals, EV batteries, battery parts, permanent magnets, and ship to shore cranes, and four, the cancellation of taxpayer-funded rebates for Chinese-made vehicles. A common-sense Conservative government will also repeal C-69, the anti-resource law, and replace it with a new law that, yes, protects the environment and consults First Nations, but also gets projects approved so that we can dig the mines, build the pipelines, produce the clean Canadian natural gas and turn dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people in this country. Bring it home. Within 60 days of becoming Prime Minister, I will launch a tax reform task force to design for me a bring it home tax cut. That will be a tax cut on work, investment and making stuff in Canada. We want this to be the best place in the world to invest in a new steel mill, dig a new mine, hire another worker. We will bring home powerful paychecks and production to this country. Very simply, when you look around here at this amazing coiled steel, the best products in the world, we want these products made by our workers on our land under our flag. That is what it means to bring it home. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll now have time for qu four questions from the floor. Oh, sorry. Hi, good morning. Simone Gavros with CHCH News. My question is related to safety in the city. The Tax Court of Canada in downtown Hamilton recently closed and they were citing uh, gun violence safety in the city there. My question is, what's your reaction to this and what are Conservative MPs doing to address gun violence in cities similar to Hamilton? Thank you for an excellent question. It's really tragic that our once safe cities have been taken over by crime, chaos, drugs and disorder. Trudeau and the NDP have brought in catch and release criminal justice policies that allow the same repeat violent gun criminals to be released within hours of their arrest to do the same crime all over again. Trudeau has failed to protect our borders against gun smugglers and that's why the guns keep coming in. Licensed, law-abiding, trained and tested hunters and sports shooters are not the problem. The problem is the criminals. So common sense conservatives will repeal the NDP liberal catch and release criminal justice policy and bring jail and not bail for repeat violent offenders. We will secure the borders to stop smuggling of firearms and we will pay for it by ending the insane confiscation of hunting rifles. Justin Trudeau blames Grandpa Joe's hunting rifle. I know Grandpa Joe is not the problem. The problem is the criminals we need to lock up and the smugglers we need to block. 
I want to protect Canadians from criminals. He wants to protect turkeys from hunters. You decide which one makes most sense. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Good morning, Mr. Polyev. Uh, David Menzies with Rebel News. Um, staying with the theme of bringing home our jobs, the unemployment rate for young people aged 15 to 24 has jumped in the past year from 10.6% to 13.5%. That's an, nearly an increase of 3% in just one year. There are 422,000 young people unemployed. And yet the Trudeau Liberals have brought in more than 750,000 temporary workers and these workers are taking the jobs that normally young Canadians would start out with, fast food jobs, convenience store jobs, etc. Why are we bringing in cheap foreign workers to undercut young Canadians just so that massive corporations like Tim Hortons can save a few bucks an hour and what would a conservative government do to reverse this trend? Thank you very much. Look, Trudeau's destroyed our entire immigration system. And he has expanded the temporary foreign worker program by well over 200% at a time when we're losing jobs. When I was responsible for that program, in 2015, we had only 60,000 temporary foreign workers. Now, it's close to 200,000. And on top of that, you have international students who are effectively temporary foreign workers that came on under the wrong stream. Our temporary foreign worker program should only be available to fill jobs that employers have proven beyond a doubt cannot be filled by Canadians. It should never be used to bring in low-wage workers from poor countries to take jobs away from or suppress the, the wages of Canadian workers. I challenge Canadian business to hire Canadian workers first. And I challenge the government to end the chaos in the temporary foreign worker program, bring the numbers down, and allow Canadians to get good, solid paying jobs that will give them enough money to buy an affordable home and food in safe neighborhoods. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Next question. Sorry. Oh, do I hold it? Okay. Okay. Hi. Um, so, sorry. Um, I'm Kara. I'm from Flamborough today. Um, I guess more jobs, bringing jobs home, that's one part of the puzzle. Um, the cost of living is extremely high. I think everybody behind you can probably attest to that. What is the plan, I guess, when it comes to the grocery store, when it comes to the cost of rent, that sort of thing? Is, is there something you have in mind? Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, terrific question. Uh, you're, you're right, uh, after nine years of Trudeau, everything costs more, work doesn't pay, housing costs have literally doubled. Here in Hamilton, they have tripled. Um, my common sense plan is to ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. We will ax the carbon tax to lower the cost of gas, heat, and grocery bills, and to make Stelco competitive so that it doesn't have to lay off these workers. Trudeau's carbon tax will probably shut down this steel plant if he goes ahead with the increases that he's promised while continuing to bring in cheap subsidized steel from China. Second, we need to fix the budget by capping government spending and cutting government waste. We can bring down debt, inflation, and interest rates. And finally, we need to build the homes. I will require municipalities free up land, speed up permits, and cut building taxes as a condition of getting their federal funding with the goal of building 15% more homes per year. The reason housing is unaffordable, we don't have enough homes. We have the fewest homes per capita in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. And that's because of our horrendous bureaucracy. I will require local governments 
cleared the bureaucracy to build 15% more per year. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings, thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. And we'll back the trades because we need boots, not suits, to build the homes of the future. Get our kids in the trades right out of high school and make sure that training money goes to them. Give tax fairness for traveling trades workers who are building those affordable homes. That is how we will make it possible for people to earn a powerful paycheck that buys affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods. Thank you. In French. Merci beaucoup. Notre plan de gros bon sens, c'est-à-dire de couper taxes et impôts, bâtir des logements, repérer le budget et stopper les crimes. On va couper les taxes carbone et les impôts pour rendre le travail payant encore. Nous allons bâtir des logements en insistant que les municipalités enlèvent la bureaucratie pour permettre la construction de plus de 15 % d'augmentation par année. 15 % plus de construction chaque année. Et troisièmement, nous allons réparer le budget en préférant les dépenses pour réduire les déficits, l'inflation et les taux d'intérêt. Le but, c'est encore d'avoir un pays où le travail fort vous donne un grand chèque de paix qui achète de nourriture, de logement et de l'essence abordable dans des communautés sécuritaires. Thank you. Thank you. This will be the final question. Uh, good morning, sir. Global News. Um, my question is to do with a terror attack uh, plotted in Toronto. And one of the two men charged with plotting the terror attack in Toronto, he came to Canada from abroad and became a citizen after he's alleged to have appeared in an ISIS video dismembering a prisoner of ISIS. Would you dedicate more resources to security screening in the immigration and citizenship system? Yes, Justin Trudeau spends our resources trying to ban plastic straws and hunting rifles while he, he opens our borders up to potential terrorists and other security risks. We have, in this case, an alleged ISIS terrorist who seems to have appeared in a video mutilating another human being, cutting another human being to pieces on a crucifix in the Middle East, and then this person who allegedly did this act was granted access to this country and has been newly charged with another alleged terrorist offense on our soil. Justin Trudeau is not worth the risk and the danger. His radical, reckless policies are putting Canadian lives at risk. A Polyev-led, common-sense conservative government will secure our borders to keep the terrorists out and keep our nation strong and free. Thank you very much. All right.